So I've actually uh, preheated the oven to 836, 830 odd degrees, give or take. It says 836 right now, but again, different steels, different temperatures. This combo of steels I tend to about 830, which is, you know, there's a lot of plain carbon steels around that sort of temperature. It's about the magic number, you know? You can go, if you go a little bit higher, you get harder, harder steel, but that's slightly your risk of increasing the grain size. Lower, you're at risk of not quenching it properly um, or not getting full hardness through it. And it's all, again, it's all that balance between hard and tough and broken and not broken and all of the above. Usually, if you buy a nice lump of steel, it'll come with instructions. So you can either look them up, there's even apps. It's a cool way of looking, a cool way of check knowing whether you're, which phase of steel you're in. Uh, you can see, literally you can see because it's non-magnetic or it's magnetic. So at the moment, that steel here, that's non-magnetic, yeah? But as it starts to cool down and change phase, it becomes magnetic. So as it starts to change, about there, look, that's magnetic now. And it's getting more and more magnetic as the time goes on. That bit is still non-magnetic. That bit, because it's bigger, is becoming magnetic now. So that's changing phase. Now, that's not necessarily exactly where you want to heat treat from, but it's a very good indication of what phase you're in in the steel. So whether, you're, whether you've taken it up past critical or whether you're below critical. If you're over critical, it will be non-magnetic. Now, some steels you want to take a little bit higher than critical. Um, some you want to have bang on critical. It all depends on what it is and how you're working. But with these ones, I've got a, I've got a temperature controlled electric kiln over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the oven. It says it's 830 degrees. I've got a thermocouple in the back, I've got a thermocouple in the side, and I've got a thermocouple in the front. So I've got a few different zones that I can look at to make sure it's the right temperature. And it's all about just heat treating for the right temperature. If you go too hot, you're likely to warp and twist and do various things you don't want to do. If you go, I'm going to do one more cycle. If you go too cold, like I say, you're not going to get that full hardness. It's all about locking in a crystal structure and locking the carbon into the right place and it causing stresses throughout the steel. So I'm going to call it a day on that cycle for a minute. I'm thin enough that we're going to get it, be able to get hardness through it with this steel. And uh, I'm going to chuck it in the heat treating oven and then it should be about, we'll give it 10 minutes to come back up to temperature. We'll soak it for 10 minutes and then we'll quench him out. Ooh, one more hit with the hammer. Ooh, one more hit. Stop hitting it, Joel. Right, it's going into heat treat, okay? So even though this one says 836, this thermocouple says 825, it's probably around about 830, give or take. And that's kind of what I'm going for. So I'm gonna leave that in there. I'm just gonna actually ramp this up a little bit higher because I know that this oven is a little bit lower than what it should be. Or well, know your equipment, you know, I know this runs, what it says here is actually 10 degrees or so cooler than what it should be. So I try and compensate by setting it a little bit high. What we're gonna do as well, is we're gonna get this oil. I'm gonna take a couple of bars of steel. I'm gonna get them up to temperature. So I'm gonna get them up to sort of yellowish heat in the forge and I'm gonna use that steel, stick it in this oil, which is, um, I think it's Rye Quench 50, it's the fast Rye Quench. Now, it's not massively quick when it's cold, but it's heat it up, it gets a little bit faster because it's thinner. So the thinner the medium, generally, um, the quicker it quench. So water will quench quicker, thin oil will quench fast, thick oil will quench slower. It all depends on what, again, what steel you're using. So these are just oily, oily bars. It's a crude way of warming up the oil. I can make sure it's the right, exactly the right temperature, but my working practice is those two bars of steel in there, it takes up to around about 70 or 80. They are a little bit hot than that. It takes it up to hot enough. It stops it shocking through the steel as much as well. It's almost, it's a way you can do a thing called mar tempering, which is when you take it, you quench through to, what's called the MS, MS, which is the martensite start formation starting point. So you quench it from like 800 to say, I, I don't know, for just for say like 400 degrees. So you have to go 800 to 400 degrees if that's your MS. Then you can slowly air cool it. So you've started the martensite formation and you've skipped a couple of other formations of crystal structure which you don't want. Um, whereas then I'm just gonna warm the oil up, quench it into that oil. It just helps quench it a little bit faster in my mind. And that doesn't make a lot of sense because it's hot. 
And once it's back up to temperature, we'll soak it for 10 minutes, or we'll be well. Da 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 da. came last week from a chap in Sheffield called Scott. Lovely chap, sharpens knives. Surprising that, we, you know, he sold me a brick. And this is, this is a beautiful stone. I can't remember what it's called. It's a sweeter, it's range. Don't know what mine is from, I'll have to ask him. Um, but it's beautiful, such a beautiful piece of stone. Now, so we're gonna start the soak. It's basically, it depends, again, different steels want different soaking times and different temperatures. This will leave it for about three minutes per millimetre of thickness. It's around about three or four millimetres thick. So I'm gonna leave it for 10 to 12 minutes, really. If you've got a working practice, so if I forge down to this size every time and I make X amount of knives all the time and I know that they're going to that thickness, then you've gonna be soaking for the same time, you know? It's not hugely important, but it's, it's better to do it roughly right. But, you know, five, six millimetres, it's, it's more important when you're working with big lumps of steel because you're going to have a temperature variation between the middle and the outside. So as you soak, it takes a little bit longer to get hot in the middle than it will on the outside. Now, when you're working with two, three millimetre thick bits of steel, four millimetre thick bits of steel, it's less important to soak it for that long. And again, with certain carbon seals, like a really, really, really clean carbon seals, if you soak them for too long, you end up with giant grain growth. You end up increasing the grain size as you're soaking it. So you want to just keep an eye on it. But Rule of thumb for what I do, 10 minutes is sufficient. Again, if you put chrome into stuff, you have to soak stuff for half an hour. If you put different things into things, then you know, it just changes the soak times. Different alloying elements take different amounts of time to sort of melt down and get into diffusion, if that makes sense. I think it makes sense. I'm not entirely sure whether I make sense most of the time, but as long as it works, eh? So I'm just gonna chuck these in the oil. Do you want to film this is going to be a bit of fire crudely by just chucking this in here. Now that's just going to take the chill out of the oil and it's going to thin it down a little bit. One more just to make it nice and warm. So our oil has actually got, it's got a higher flash point. It's got some kind of additive in it to stop it from setting on fire as much as it should. It will still set on fire. You get the same thing and you can feel it's getting, it's, it's getting hot now. I don't want it too hot, but I want it hot enough that it's gonna do its thing. People use all sorts of different oils. So like, you can use um, vegetable oil, but it's a little bit thicker. Yeah, you can do all sorts of different things, but it's all about the rate of cooling and your success rate, I suppose. There used to be um, an oil called Parks. So there's Parks AA and Parks AAA. And those were like oils that were so thin they were almost water quenching. This is the version of rye oil that's like a water quenching. So I'm going to give this a little stir up. That's up to 8.30. I'm just going to check my timer to make sure I'm not going in too early. I'm going in too early. I'm going to wait. Patience is a virtue, one that I'm not very good at. We're going to go in there. Once it's done that, we're going to make sure it's straight, which it should be relatively straight. The oaks, fingers crossed, touch wood. We're just at the right temperature. I'm going to flick this off and I'm going to quench. Look at that, it's straight. Who knew? Always a bonus. I mean, you can, you can fight and battle and straighten, and the straighter it is when it comes to that quench, the less of that you've got to do. And usually, actually, with a mosaic pattern, it's, it, they tend to stay a little bit straighter in my, in my experience, just because you've got pattern going through this way, as opposed to pattern going through that way. So if you've got a straight laminate of Damascus, if you've got slightly harder on one side or slightly softer on the other side, so if one side's more carburized or decarburized or one side's got more stresses in it than the other side, then you'll end up with flexing and bending. But if you've got the pattern going through here and you've had a nice clean grind, you've not got any decarb bits over the surface or you've not got much decarb over the surface, then it tends to stay a little bit straighter, which is an absolute joy. Working with stuff like um, single bevel knives, which are things like Japanese Yanagiba and Daiba and Usubas and stuff like that, you end up with a super banana. So because you've got one piece of steel, which is different to the cladding, one piece of steel reacts differently to the heat treat and the thing just goes 
bends and it'll slowly straighten up a little bit. And there's ways of straightening it and keeping it straight, but it's just fighting. You're just fighting this material all the time. I'm actually pretty, pretty pleased with how straight that is. We're gonna give it five minutes to cool down to about room temperature. Then I'm gonna stick it in the oven to temper back. Looking good, feeling good, uh, straight enough. So that's kind of warm. It's not, it's not cold. Um, it's hot enough that I can kind of hang on to it. It's a little bit warmer up here because there's a big chunk of metal there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna temper it back, which is gonna basically stop it from being as hard and as brittle. Now, like I said, I'd usually do a couple of rounds of tempering. You can do, you can temper it, check how hard it is, then temper it. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna temper it once, get on the grind. So that's gonna go into this oven, which is a domestic oven. And we're going to run it around about uh, 175 degrees for about 45 minutes uh, until it's crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. A nice golden brown crust is what we're looking for. So that's going to be 45 minutes. I'm going to set a timer and we'll just do one round. So once we've finished up the knife and everything, can we have some like tasty John Lewis music and some panning shots, almost like a Marks and Spencer's advert, something like that. Something like, this isn't just a knife. This isn't just a knife. It's a child black knife. If Carlsberg's made knives. <laughs> <laughs>